So the reason that um, you're not seeing, you know, a nice calm camera like here and you're seeing me holding it is because I broke my tripod. It's okay, it was like a cheap little dollar store one. Um, oh well. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to do, you can see like the old stains here. This is a really old crock pot my mom gave me for one of my birthday presents. It's well loved, it's clean, it's just... I'll eventually bleach it again there, but that's that just happens with years of use. Um, Alright, so the next thing I'm going to get started is... Um, birdie mash for styles my cocktail so um again i always go oh there's nothing in the house i can't make mash and then i get up and then i start looking at everything and yeah i have more than enough to make a good batch of mash first thing this is millet okay all right so for anyone who knows i have thyroid issues okay I do not keep this in the house for myself. This is literally just for styles. I've had this in here for about a year because the last time I made it was a year ago. Um, for those who have thyroid issues and do not know, okay, do not eat millet. It will cause, it causes goiter. It's really bad for you, okay? This is, even though it is a healthy grain, it is not healthy for people with thyroid issues. So, I'm going to... Okay, I do something that, like, a lot of people like to cook all their stuff separately. I really just don't. So I eyeball everything. So I'm going to, like, throw a little bit of millet in here. Okay, this is, a lot of the stuff I do is eyeballing. So, just saying. Uh, the next thing I have is Izuki beans. Again, I keep, like, a 10-pound bag. I'm almost out of that bag. The other thing I have is wild rice. I forgot I had this. I'm just gonna throw some in here. Yeah, this should be enough. Again, I'm probably gonna end up making way too much of this stuff. Thank you. We're gonna throw the wild rice in here too. I'm gonna keep a little bit back because again, I'm gonna have to make mash again at some point. I also have organic quinoa. So we're gonna put a little bit of that in there. Quinoa is like super good for you. It's expensive, but again, I'm using all my expensive stuff for my bird. This is kind of how it works in this house. Now, the next thing I have here, okay, I don't know what it is right now. I know it's healthy for birds because when my mom brought it over, I researched. Now, if anyone knows what this is, please tell me. It's either buckwheat or it's catmint or something like that. I'm like forgetting right now. I'm sure all the birdie people I know are going to be like, Camille, you only have one cocktail. What are you doing? For all those people, come and get some. <laughs> um, the other thing that I'm going to put in is some dried hot peppers. I love these so much. And... My bird loves it too. Like, you have no idea. So I'm trying to make sure to be very careful because if this goes too high, it, it won't absorb all the water. It'll be a huge hot mess. And the other thing I'm going to put in is some wheat bran. Now, there's a few other things here that I'm not adding right now. Um, one of the things is 
my oats because these are quick oats they're gonna cook really fast so I'm gonna cook those separately and mix them up the other thing is flax seeds those I'm going to grind up and put in as a powder and the apple cider vinegar I'm gonna put in later and I also obviously I'm more than aware that you need vegetables in this um, I'm cooking these first and then I'm gonna show you how I um, put in all of the vegetables and everything because usually like I put a lot of vegetables in this as well um, so this I'm gonna fill with water here right to the edge because this like it didn't look like a lot but all of that is going to expand so you want a lot of water to be able to fill that up I don't measure because I mean honestly if you slow cook this long enough all that water is going to be absorbed if not you can drain it like <laughs> when I make birdie mash it's not an exact science and it always comes out really good you'll see trust me all right, so I moved my uh, food processor over and plugged this in. There's like two plugs there, both slow cookers. And I'm gonna put it on low because this one honestly doesn't need to be cooked really fast. Actually, you know what? We're gonna put it fast. Because I mean, Styles is hungry for some mash, so. So as you can see, um, it's nine o'clock in the evening right now so I don't have the best lighting but this is now officially cooked there's still like a little bit of excess liquid here but really not much I'm actually probably gonna just put the oatmeal in dry in this and it'll sop up all that extra liquid and cook instantly because it's instant oatmeal and uh, and then I will show you what else I'm putting in this in a second all right so I've moved everything into a big bowl I've got like one cup here of oatmeal that I'm gonna throw in and I'm gonna mix this in and we'll see you know if this is enough probably is now, I have some leftover frozen vegetables here, and I am going to throw these in. Mom blanched some broccoli, so I'm going to put the broccoli in there as well. Alright, so, put in all the broccoli. A little bit bigger than I would have liked it to be for this, but not too bad. Now, um, did I mention that I tend to make too much? I think I've mentioned this. <laughs> I always end up having to move this into a bigger pot and now my bigger pot is dirty so I won't be able to do that right right now hopefully I can just flatten everything into this all right and the next thing I'm gonna be putting in is some red pepper flakes now that means I officially can't eat any of this <laughs> and some cinnamon
and I'm gonna mix this in. Now I just put in some flaxseed in here and I'm gonna grind these up. And uh, these help with like natural oils. I also have coconut oil upstairs. You're not gonna see it because I don't have it here right now and I'm in a rush, I have to go back uh, to start my shift soon. But um, there will be some coconut oil in here as well. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to be grinding up here is actually some dulse. Um, like I mentioned before, this is some dulse that my coworker Chris gave me. So, it's for me, but a little bit for my bird is actually really good for him. So I decided to put some in there, grind it up. Alright, so I'm just going to shove the dulse flakes in there as well. I'm also going to put in a little bit of this and again the coconut oil that I mentioned previously is going to be going in there as well and uh, that will be my birdie mash. Alright so I've put everything in as you can see I got a little tired put the rest into a big one here so hopefully this one won't give me any issues and then the other ones are all here all the hummus is in these containers here. So he hasn't really eaten any of his food yet. It'll probably take him a little bit before he goes down. Right, Styles? I tried to get him to eat on the table, but he was not having it. So, yeah, that was my batch cooking. <laughs> it takes a while, but honestly, it's not that hard. Um, I strongly suggest that, you know, try it. You're going to cook your whole life. You're going to have to eat your whole life. You might as well learn to cook well um, and healthy because, I mean, if you don't have your health, what do you have, you know? So, again, like, comment, subscribe. If you want to see more of these kinds of videos, let me know. Um, both cooking and, I mean, pet related too, I guess. Um, Lord knows I've got some experience with animals. Um, took my first semester vet tech. I've kept a lot of different exotic animals. And, uh, you know, so if anybody wants to know anything, have any questions, just let me know. And um, again, thank you for watching. Bye.